When I was 12 years old, I went to a Los Angeles Angels game with my brother Brian. And while I don't see Brian very often, we're still pretty close. While we were waiting, waiting for a first pitch, we talked about a lot of things. One of these things was job and occupation. I was curious what my brother did, and I didn't know, so I decided to ask. And straightforward question that I thought I had asked revealed a not so straightforward answer. My brother told me he couldn't tell me. But he did tell me that it had something to do with code, and he had to change his password once a week. So this piqued my curiosity. I saw my brother as a spy. I had only seen such a job secrecy in movies talking about James Bond and Jason Bourne. So that weekend, I looked up what is computer science and how to code. I was curious, and that curiosity led me to the Harvard edX program. Harvard's entire computer science course online for free. So I signed up. And through the months of me taking this course, learning the fundamentals and the basics of computer programming, I learned how to code little games. And those games got interesting, but you know, when that got pretty boring to do, I, I started thinking more, OK, how can I make code benefit me? I spent all this time learning how to code, so how can I benefit from it? Well, I, I started to notice problems in my life that I didn't like. I didn't like waking up to an alarm clock, for example. So I decided to program lights to turn on and off at a certain time to wake me up. Another thing I decided to do was I coded a Raspberry Pi, which if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's the image on the right, and it's a small programmable computer. This particular Raspberry Pi, I decided to code to block ads on devices connected to my Wi-Fi network. So when I did this, I realized that there's endless possibilities to what code can be. Bill Gates says we're not close to building the dream PC. All of you have used a computer at some capacity, may it be a phone, tablet, or PC. So you, we can all agree that they're pretty capable already. But imagine what computers will become in 10, 20 years' time. I didn't fully get the, the scope, the, the gravity the code had on the world until my family took a trip to New York City. And when we were in New York City, my family and I were walking through Times Square on our way to go do whatever my mom had planned for us to do that morning. And in doing so, I looked around at all the screens, the taxis, the people on their phones. The city was packed. It was mid-November, so everyone was there for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And while I didn't notice it in the moment, when we got back to the hotel, I realized that code's everywhere. If code didn't exist, taxi machines would go back to be mechanically reliant, and the smartphones we know and love today wouldn't exist. The ease of access would be taken away if code wasn't a thing. Code is truly in the center of, our today, of today's modern world. Every industry is touched by code in some way. The medical field, their machines, the education, is touched by code. Steve Jobs says that everyone should learn a computer language, and I agree with him. The International Data Corporation says that only 0.3% of the world's population are in software developer jobs. So out of around 8 billion or so people living in the world today, that's around 20 million people. And look at what those 20 million people were able to make. Everything we have today has been made by 20 million people. Our modern world has been forged by only 20 million. Imagine if that number was closer to 1%, what the world would look like. And the people that are, have these jobs keep them. People in specialty fields like software development, cybersecurity, data science, have a 95% employment rate. There are more jobs than there are people to fill them. And these jobs make it worth your while. Depending on your experience level and your education, you can make anywhere from $40,000 to $110,000. I'm just in high school, but that sounds pretty good to me. So I encourage you to find your reason to code. Find the thing that piques your curiosity. Maybe it's this talk, or maybe similar to me, 
you go out on Google and you look it up, you take the Harvard course, or you just start tinkering with things. If nothing else, I hope this talk piqued your curiosity. When I learned how to code, I became a problem solver. I stopped settling for the problem's good enough, I can live with it, and started thinking, okay, can I make something that can fix it? Can I program something that'll make that nuance go away? When I learned programming, my brain, I, I taught myself how to think. I re-taught myself how to think. So when you learn programming, you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much.